One of the myths under which so many people live today is that we have the best health care system in the world. After all, why would wealthy people from around the world come to the United States if we didn't have the best health care system in the world? Well, I describe our health care system this way. We have islands of excellence in a sea of mediocrity. We have the Mayo Clinics. I'm proud to be on the board of the trustees of the Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinics, Johns Hopkins. We probably have some very good islands of excellence in California, but we have a sea of mediocrity. A hundred eighty thousand people last year participated in what we now call medical tourism. Medical tourism is a growing practice in the United States where people go to other countries to get health care. Spent over two billion dollars, 40,000 of them went to Mexico, and we expect that number to go up exponentially in coming years. Why? In part because they don't have access, in part because they can't afford an American health care system, and in part because they're worried about quality. Regardless of whether or not anybody in this room would participate in medical tourism, we have to break the myth that this is the best health care system in the world. When you spend as much as we do and end up with the results that we do, the word value never enters into the equation. And that, to me, is what our goal should be, value. The highest performance and the greatest value. And we don't have that today. A second myth is that any concept involving reform would also involve rationing. Well, we ration today on the worst possible criteria, and that is one's ability to pay or one's health condition. If you don't have the ability to pay, you don't get insurance. If you don't get insurance, you don't get access. If you have a pre-existing condition, even something like diabetes, you may not get insurance, even if you had normally the ability to pay a typical premium. And so we ration based on your current state of health or your current state of financial wherewithal. How, how adverse could that possibly be in a society as proud as we are of the opportunities that we'd like to think America provides every citizen. We took rationing to a new level just recently in one of my favorite states, Oregon. Some of you maybe heard about this. Oregon came to the realization that they have 600,000 uninsured, 600,000 just in the state of Oregon, and they couldn't afford to provide insurance for all of these people under the current system, so they started something new. They started a lottery. So now they have a lottery in Oregon where if you are one of the lucky winners, you get health care. 24,000 of that 600,000 is all who will be served in this lottery system at least this year. What does that say about society? that the lucky winner gets the opportunity to get health care in the United States of America in the year 2008. There's another myth that any possible solution is something we just can't afford. It would cost too much. Well, I have to tell you, I don't know what could possibly be more costly than the current system if nothing changes. I would argue we can, cannot afford not to change our health care system in the future. And finally, there's a myth that we have a private system in our health care, and we have to preserve this private system. 
We don't have a private system. We have a public private system. 45% of all Americans get their health care today from one of seven different federal programs, government programs. 55% get it from the private sector. So we have a public-private system that is not integrated today. It's like two systems, two finance systems working side by side with no interrelationship virtually at all. And that is where part of the problem lies.